Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to this time of meditation. I hope you have read uh, yesterday's passage, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 17. Today also we will read the same passage, but this time chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. Now when you read the whole passage, Apostle Paul is mentioning five great needs of believers in this passage. And uh, what I'm going to do is just to mention these needs. And then we will pray that God will help us to see our needs and then pray ourselves for ourselves for these needs. And for others in our church, our brothers and sisters, for other believers, you know, we pray for what? We pray for healing. We pray for uh, their difficulties. And the, we pray that food may be given to them and other needs be met, material needs. These are uh, the things that we usually pray. But you read the prayers of the Apostle Paul, you will never see that he is praying for these kind of needs. He is praying, as I mentioned, these five great needs mentioned here, your own prayer for yourself and for your fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ in the church be like this, for others. The number one need he mentioned, we read in chapter, verses 15 and 16, it is for spiritual strength for the inner man. The inner man's strength is very important in a Christian life. If you are strong in your inner man, inner person, that spiritual man, formed in the image of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, that man has to be strong. And if that person is strong, then there is nothing to worry about. You will be not be afraid. You will not be in doubt of anything. And I pray that you will have this desire, my inner being must be strong. My inner strength, therefore, must be uh, firm. And the second need he mentions is in uh, the, the indwelling of Christ in their hearts. Verse 17, part A. The first part of verse 17. What is it? The indwelling of Christ in our hearts. This is very important, my friends. Very often many Christians live as if they don't remember who is alive in them. They talk as if it is their old man is still alive. They are very careless in their behavior and attitude. And they display the old man's uh, uh, characteristics, which is not right. Because if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have all passed away. Behold, everything has become new. And Apostle Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ is the one who is alive in me. And so remember, Apostle Paul's prayer is that indwelling presence of Christ must be in their hearts. So remember, Apostle John in his epistle says, He who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. In the world is the devil and the demons. But in you lives Jesus Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Remember that. So you cannot hide behind this excuse, oh, I am only a human being, I am weak, and I have that, this weakness, and that, you know. That is not right, my friends, to remain like that forever. Yeah, there may be times in the beginning of your Christian life that may, be, may have been true, but no longer, as you grow old in your Christian experience, your inner presence of that Christ must be more and more visible in your character. May the Lord bless us with that. 
and uh, the third need mentioned is found in verse 7 the second part of it the fixing of devout affections in the soul that affection comes through love and that means our relationship and, uh, and our attitude towards God, who is God and what is God to us. He is the most important person in our life. And if so, it is he who must have the dominance in our life. Number four, he also prayed for their experimental um, acquaintance with the love of Jesus Christ verses 18 and 19 that you may know the, the how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of God which is in Christ Jesus and uh, it is the prayer, it was the prayer of Apostle Paul for those believers that they will know this love by experiment, by experience. And you keep on experiencing the love of God in a deeper sense. The love root goes deeper and deeper and stronger and stronger and higher and higher until Jesus is totally formed in us. And last of all, he also prayed that they may be filled with all the fullness of Godhead. Verse 19. That is the ultimate goal where Apostle Paul wants himself and others to arrive. That we be filled with the fullness of of God himself. God fills everything in every way. He fills the universes. He fills the heavens and the earth and the seas. He fills, he's everywhere. Out of his fullness, he gives us grace upon grace. So when this is available by the power of the Holy Spirit, why should we lag behind in the understanding of God's love and his suffering. Let us enter into a very intimate and affectionate uh, relationship with Jesus Christ. Based on that love. Hallelujah. That's the way Christ loves us. He looks upon us as if we are the, are the one for whom he lives. And may the Lord bless you as you allow the Holy Spirit to fill you with the love of God. We need baptism in the Holy Spirit. We also need to be baptized in the love of God. Im immersed in the love of God. And let us give ourselves to, for this purpose and be filled with his love. Let his love become the motivating force in anything we do for Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, let everyone who watch this and listen to your word this morning be drawn closer to you in affection and in love and be filled with your love and be baptized in your love as well as being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And let that love be the motivating force in anything we do for you. We give you praise, O oh Lord God, that this is possible because of the Holy Spirit's ministry to us. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my friends. Enjoy your life today. Have a good day and a fruitful and victorious day, and rejoice in the Lord. Amen.